Hello, you guys. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about differential leveling. I have two examples. So let's go ahead and start. The table below shows a differential. <clears throat> the table below shows differential leveling data using a transit level. The starting station at A is of known elevation. Find the elevation and meters of station D. So we're given a table here. We're giving station A, B, C, and D. So we have four stations. We're giving the backside, which we know if you have worked on this kind of examples, you may know or may not. Usually we add this backside distance. And foresight distance, we usually subtract this foresight distance. We are giving the elevation at station A. And this is called the benchmark. A benchmark is a reference point in measuring altitude. Okay, so how do we find the elevation at station D? How do we find the elevation at any station for that matter? So let me just do a sketch to explain better how this works, the concept behind it. Let's say this is our station A, and this elevation is known to us we have 500 feet. I'm going to just draw here a little bit of a hill. Let's assume this is station B. Now, how this works in real life, usually two people work on this. So if one person places themselves between station A and B, somewhere in the middle of station A and B, and then the other person holds a rod at this known elevation. And there is a reading done. This is called backside. And this reading is actually this vertical distance from this reading to the ground. So this is the backside distance. I'm going to call it Y. This is the backside distance. And then this person from point A, goes with the rod all the way to point B, places places themselves here, and then another reading is done called foresight reading. And this is the reading, the vertical distance actually, from this point to the ground, to the point. I'm gonna just call here YFS. And now starting from this known elevation, 500 feet, if we add, if, if we follow what we have discussed, we take the known elevation, 500 feet, we add the backside distance, we're gonna get to this point, right? If we start here, we add this backside distance, which is this vertical distance, we're gonna get this height of instrument. We're gonna know this elevation here. And then if from here, we subtract this foresight distance, we're going to get the elevation at point B. So this is going to give us elevation at point B. And if moving forward, they're going to repeat these steps until they find the elevation at every single station. So let's go ahead and follow these steps to find the elevation at station D. So let's see, elevation at station B, it's going to be equal to 500 plus 395, 3.95, which is the backside distance, minus 634. Let's see how much is this. So we have 500, 3.95 plus 6.34 minus. And I'm getting an elevation at point B of 497, Point sixty one feet. And now elevation at station C, it's going to be starting at this point. Why? Because imagine if this is station C, we're going to place ourselves somewhere in between. And we're going to have this reading here, which is going to give me this vertical distance, backside distance, right? And we are starting with this known elevation because we have calculated it previously. So we're going to start with this elevation of station C plus backside distance. It's going to give us the height of instrument. And then we're going to subtract this 
for side distance. And then we're going to get to elevation at point C. I hope you follow me. So start at 497.61 plus this is the backside distance 247 minus then this is the foresight distance 551 let's see how much is this so 497.61 2.47 plus 5.51 minus i'm getting an elevation of 494.57 feet this is the elevation at point C. And you know what? I'm going to come here and just write them down in this cell here. 497.61 is the elevation at station B. 494.57. And next is going to be elevation at station D. We're going to have 494.57 plus 3. 81 and minus 678. Okay, we get 381 minus 678 plus, and I get, let's see, I get an elevation of 491.6 feet. And looking at the answers, I get that elevation at station D is 491.6, which is option D. This is our correct answer. As you can see, this is not complicated at all. Once you understand this concept here that I drew, this is very easy to solve. Now let's go to our next example. The table below shows differential leveling data using a transit level what is most nearly the adjusted elevation of station C? So now we have to calculate the adjusted elevation. Why is that? It's because when we do this kind of measurements, there's usually an error that occurs and we have to adjust that error at the end. So first let's go ahead and calculate the elevation for every single station as we did in our previous problem. I'm gonna just go ahead and write down here, if you remember, we start at this known elevation and we add the backside distance. Let me write this. So benchmark or maybe a reminder that this is, we add the backside and we subtract the foresight. So once we add the backside distance, we get the height of the instrument. So height of instrument is gonna be 105.51. You know what, let me write it down here in this cell to make more sense. So I get this plus this, I'm getting 105.51. This is the height of the instrument. And now I'm gonna go and subtract this foresight distance and I'm gonna get the elevation at station B. 105.51 minus Call that 105.51, 325 minus, and I get a an elevation of 102.26 feet. Great, now I have this elevation at station B. I'm gonna repeat the steps. I'm going to add the backside distance of 653, 653 plus, and I'm getting the height of the instrument of 108.79. And now I'm going to subtract the foresight distance of 10.5, which will give me an elevation at station C of 98.29 feet. Okay, let's keep going and repeat the steps. Now I have elevation station C. I'm gonna go here and add the backside distance to get the height of the instrument, right? Okay, 4.32 plus, I'm getting the height of instrument of 102.61. 
And then I will just subtract the 6.67, which is the foresight distance. And I'm going to get the elevation at point D of 95.94 feet. Okay, let's repeat the process now. Placing ourselves in between D and A, we're going to add the backside distance, which is 3.27 feet. And I'm getting the height of the instrument as 99.21. And let's subtract the foresight distance of 7.89 minus. And I'm getting an elevation at station A of 91.32 feet. So check. If you notice here, we started at 100 feet. And now going back to station A, I got 91.32 feet. So there is an error that occurs. And we have to adjust this error at every single elevation. And the way we do that, we're just going to calculate the total error. So this error is equal to 100 feet minus 91.32 feet. And I'm getting 8.68 feet error. And now with this 8.68, I have to divide it by four because we have four stations. So I'm gonna get my, let me change the color here. I'm going to get this delta error as 8.68 divided by 4. And I am getting a delta of 2.17. And how do we adjust our elevation now? We're going to come back here and we're going to add one time delta to this number here. So we're gonna take this elevation that we got and we're gonna add this one time delta. And we're gonna get the adjusted elevation at station B. Coming back here to station C, we're gonna add two times delta and we're gonna get adjusted elevation at station C. Moving forward, we're gonna add three times delta at station D, and at station A, we're gonna add four times delta, and this is gonna bring us our station A, four times delta, we're gonna give us the 868, which means here we're gonna get 100 feet. So now let's calculate the other elevations to get the adjusted elevation. So at station B, well, for our FE purposes, if you get this, type of problem at the exam, you don't have to calculate the adjusted elevation at every single station. You just go ahead to your station C and you do this calculation and this is your answer. Now for this purposes of this problem, I'm gonna go ahead and solve that. So I get 2.17, plus station B, Adjusted elevation is 104.43 feet. Now station C, I have 217, two times that, adding 98.29, and I'm getting an adjusted elevation at station C of 102.63 feet, which gives me the correct answer Right, the correct answer, it seems to be D, 102.6 feet. Now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the adjusted elevation at station D, 217, 3 multiplied, 95, 94 plus. And the adjusted elevation at station D, it is not asking us, but I'm going to calculate. I have calculated it, it's 102.45. All right, and that is all for today. It's not very complicated. If you have any questions, please leave your question and comments in the comment section below. And I'll see you next week.